Millennials always think they're the smartest person in the room. Spoiler alert, they're not. Example, me. I think I'm really smart. I'm a business student. I can tell you the entire history of La Nouvelle France, but I cannot tell you what a city stands for. I can't even file my own taxes. Heck, I'm so bad at saving. Last week, I spent 40% of my net worth on this suit. <laughs> je vais continuer la présentation en anglais, euh, mais je vous en prie de demander des questions en français euh, à la fin de la présentation. On va être euh, très content de vous répondre. Uh, without further ado, my name is Jeanne. These are my colleagues Vanessa and Emma. We are both consulting, and we were here. Uh, we were brought here to develop a digital strategy to provide young members and non-members of Des Jardins with the tools and advice they need to reach that financial literacy. So we've looked at the digitalization of industry, we've looked at Desjardins' current offerings, and we've also looked at, well, millennials, because whether you like it or not, millennials will be millennials. Um, that being said, the mandate that we're imposing is that we're here to educate and empower millennials, because at the end of the day, that is your goal for 2020, to become the leading banking uh, corporation for these millennials. And we're so very excited to be presenting to you because we are, in fact, millennials, and we're not too sure what's going on. And hopefully, Desjardins is going to be one, the one to solve it. Our recommendation is not the banquier de ton père, an omni channel <laughs> digital strategy that educates and empowers the youth, the millennials, just like me, to achieve their goals. This will improve young people's perception of Desjardins, it'll grow membership in Quebec, and it'll build loyalty amongst your uh, young members. Before we could dive into that, my colleague is going to get into the insights that drove our conclusion to this recommendation. Thank you so much, Jeanne. So yes, as we know, whoops, technology has been impacting this central old industry more than anyone could have ever believed. Um, before, banks were there to kind of manage your physical money. And now with uh, their banking cards that came into play, and now with the digital phones, I don't even hold a wallet anymore. I have everything on my phone, I pay with my phone, and contactless payment is going on the rise. So this is where the industry is going. And it's very hard for these big and complex um, banks, be having been like century old banks, to live up to these new consumer expectations. Um, this is what happened with the pop-up of fintechs. So the, the fintechs saw this gap in the market. They saw that 
consumer trends were changing and big complex banks had a hard time keeping up. So then a hundred of companies just popped up in that gap. And um, now big banks like maybe Tangerine are starting to um, realize that. So they're, they're, big banks are, um, do, are either acquiring their, these fintechs or are setting up these new franchisees like Tangerine to cater to these millennial trends. The commonalities between all of these are that they are digital. So everything is online because now again, reiterating the point that everyone's going on the internet. Uh, they're user friendly, so that's a big one for millennials. They are not boring and they are very, very easy to use. Now, uh, they're also very hands-on. So as Jian said, we think we're very smart, but it's because everything is so easy for us. <laughs> so we have the information at the tip of our fingers. So all of these companies, what they're doing, the fintechs, they're super hands-on. Push notification, vulgarizing fintech, it's, uh, it's really, they're their main goal. And then they're educating on finance. So a lot of these fintechs, yes, they have like the feature, like Acorn's uh, micro saving, that's their principal purpose, but attached to that is really helping young, young people understand uh, their finances the way that complex banks cannot do. So um, the takeaway here is that fintechs are winning millennials because they are educating and empowering them. Now, when you look at your current offerings, obviously you have an omni-channel presence. You have the physical locations, uh, your website, www.desjardins.com, a mobile app, online tools, online calculators. You're keeping up with the trends as much as all the other big banks are keeping up with the trends. So it's still very traditional user interfaces. Um, you don't have everything online, so that's something that uh, millennials, I know that I have a city that's dormant since five years because I don't want to call or I don't want to go to the bank because it's so, um, it's just grueling for me. I wish I could have it on my app and understand what it is on my app. Now, um, not, is, not everything is as technology up, up to date as millennials would want to. Now, if we think about your business objectives that you gave us, there's a gap. Your business objective was to build loyalty amongst young members, grow membership in Quebec, and improve people's perception of Desjardins. With the current offerings, we see that there's a gap, and that's why today we're going to present to you Paul Banquier de Tempire, which is going to help merge those gaps. Now, who is our typical millennial? Our typical millennial is between 25 to 34 years old. She's a recent graduate, either in large city, where they hang out is usually large cities because they're in universities or starting big jobs. Jobs have mostly um, tend to be in larger cities. They're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all the social medias. This is where they hang out probably 80% of their days, unfortunately. And then uh, they values, they know, they knows, um, she knows that she should be saving to purchase a house. So she knows this, and, but she doesn't like going to banks because she feels that they're not always on their side. So that's something very big. Now, she wants, today, yeah, today we're gonna tell you what she wants, what she's scared of, and what she needs. So that's what she needs. She needs to purchase a house. She knows that she needs to start saving up, but what she wants is more out of their, her current bank. She also wants to stop spending impulsively. She really wants that. And when you're younger and your parents are helping you, it's something that you can do, but then when you get older and you have financial obligations, it's something that you can no longer do. So, and she also wants to become financial literate, but she doesn't know where to start. So, um, but what she's scared of is her spending habits. So actually telling the bank that she's spending this way or telling anyone and reaching out for help in time, and when you have an issue, just reaching out for help is hard. And now she also has, um, she's scared that the banks are gonna be misleading her. So these FinTechs, what they have is they're very approachable and they're very millennial. So millennials think that these people know more and that they're gonna help them more than the big banks. So she's scared of the banks. And then um, she's also not being able to achieve her goals. That's a big thing is, am I even gonna be able to ever buy a house? <laughs> Now, if you look at her journey, she wakes up, checks her phone immediately, and looks at the news <laughs> on Facebook, YouTube, all the social medias. She grabs a coffee on her way to wake and paying with, again, her digital wallet. So that's another touch point. Um, at lunch, she gets tempted to buy sushi, even though she brought her lunch at work. <laughs> and now, after work, um, she watches her favorite YouTube influencer and sees that there's a cute pair of shoes she's selling, automatically goes on Amazon and buys them. Now, at night, she also realizes that she forgot to pay her credit card that was due Friday. Unfortunately, it's the reality of a lot of millennials today. So to wrap up and to show you how you can win with these millennials is one, you have to meet them where they are. Social media, online, uh, you're already there, but you really have to um, meet them where they are. Now, uh, you also have to challenge their creativity. So it has to be interactive, it has to be user-friendly, and um, you have to make them involved into the process as well. That's what we're gonna to touch on in our third um, pillar. And now you also have to make everything too easy. 
So we're used to having everything from the click of a button. We're in the Amazon generation. They need to make it easy. You guys need to make it easy for them to learn and to manage their money. So in terms of alternatives, we've outlined three. The first one being a stock simulation app. And the reason behind this is basically the stock simulation app will teach financial literacy to these millennials to somewhat create this simulation for them to understand the processes of stock, uh, stock exchange. That being said, the deal breaker about this is that stocks and traditional investing is not in top of the mind of a millennial. A lot of them are in debt. A lot of them are looking to get their first down payment on a house. Stocks isn't necessarily where they want to be putting all of their capital. The second alternative is social media banking. So this would be an alternative where the recommendation would imply you can add your friends on your banking app to see their financial levels, to track their goals. Um, it's an interactive way. It's something that millennials would technically be interested in. But the deal breaker is that millennials don't necessarily want to share their information. As much as they're more open to the internet than the older generations, they're still scared of you know, saying, oh, yeah, I spent X amount of money this week, and everybody I know knows that. Doesn't make too much sense. So that's how we got to our third alternative, the omni-channel digital educational features. So this is an all-encompassing educational but also empowering um, campaign, which helps millennials you know, manage and learn about uh, financial literacy. And this is the one thing, and nothing else will do this, it's the one thing that will make Desjardins um, millennials number uh, gain, and it would become the number one bank of choice for millennials. And that's how we got to Paul Banquier de ton père. So I know it's a somewhat funny name, and before we get into it, it's important to understand that me as a millennial, I've gone to the bank with my father, I've been to the bank with my mother, and you know, I don't necessarily relate with this person as much. I feel like I'm not learning because I feel like there's a generational gap between us. And that's why you can leverage technology to incentivize millennials to learn about the financial industry. At a glance, our recommendation goes across 12 months. The first one being educating and empowering, where this is where you build trust between your, um, your non-members that you're trying to reach, but also the current members you have within Desjardins. And this looks like a YouTube channel, uh, Paul Banquier de ton père would be the name of the YouTube channel. It would be short educational videos. This uh, would look like a 300 views on average per video. The second phase is leveling up, six to 12 months, where you engage new and current members. The development of your uh, personal tirelire, if you will, and 60% of customers will be using these new features that we'll get into. The third phase is reinventing payback points. Payback points have been done by a lot of banks, it's been done by a lot of corporations, but there are new, interesting, intuitive ways to implement this. We'll get into it later. By later, I mean now. <laughs> All right, so we'll start with the first phase, which is educating and empowering millennials. So the basis before anything starts, these millennials need to know what they're getting into. They need to know how to manage their finances, how to handle the budget, and so on. So in the first phase, we'll be creating a YouTube channel, Paul Banquier de ton père, and all these videos will be embedded on the Desjardins website, so that will be the main point of contact, and people will have the possibility to share their, to their Facebook pages, as well as you will also be sharing this to your own Facebook page. Um, and here, we want to feature a young woman or man that is very similar to your target market. And the key here is because, as we mentioned, millennials feel scared of banks. They don't necessarily trust them, and they feel intimidated by the whole process. So your target consumer comes in, she's going to sit down with her financial advisor, and she doesn't know anything of what's about to happen, much less any of the financial jargon. So the point of these videos is really to dumb down the financial terms and make sure that millennials know where their money is going and how to properly invest and finance uh, in their, into their futures. So that's really the key here. We want to build trust and we want you to do that by using somebody who's exactly the same age as your target, as your target demographic, that this person will be trustworthy, that they're similar to your target market and that's what we want uh, to achieve. That's how you're going to build trust with your consumers. So the message here is that Desjardins speaks your language and they're here to help you manage uh, your finances better. So the struggle is real, but we're here, we understand, and we're here to help you. And as we mentioned, we want the target here to be 300,000 uh, views per video. Now moving on to the second phase, which is leveling up. Here we're not doing anything too new or too drastic, but as we mentioned, this is where the industry is going. FinTech is coming up and uh, you need this in order to stay relevant. So we're going to be introducing two new features on your app. The first one is the micro tirelire, 
uh, savings feature. So it's very similar to how when you were younger you had change and you would just put it in your cochon um, porcelain. And so basically this would allow customers to uh, round up their daily purchases. So for example, if they buy something for $5.50, the remaining 50 cents would go into their virtual tirelire, and this would allow them to save up and meet their potential savings goals. So they would be receiving recurring reports, visual reports, to display their savings that they have generated from their tirelire. In terms of the second uh, feature that we'll be introducing is the financial tracking app. So basically you'll have different categories of spending and it'll allow, allow users in real time to see how much of their budget is going towards different categories and if they want to set, uh, set a limit to that, they can so that uh, they know when they have exceeded that limit and they know when to cut down or maybe if they have a little bit more leeway, and leeway where they can um, uh, invest more or spend more in that category. So this will be using uh, artificial intelligence to drive insights and then f uh, be beneficial to your members. We also want to introduce push notifications. So this is going to allow the customers in real time to receive notifications on their spending habits. So for example, your target your target customer, she buys her coffee. Oh, that was the coffee too much that week. She's exceeded her limit for her, for her food and beverage spending. She's going to receive an alert on her phone telling her, you've reached the limit and well, it's up to you to follow that limit, but <laughs> essentially you've reached the limit. And it'll also offer a link to these videos. So for example, here's how you can manage your budget better. And she'll be able to click on the link and be directed to the Desjardins website where she'll see that video and then get uh, trip tips and tricks on how to better manage her, uh, her budget. And obviously there will be an option to opt out. They would just have to text stop or no, and then the notifications would stop. So for example, we would have, Salut Marianne, trop de dépenser sur ton café. Regarde comment la réduction de l'achat de café peut t'aider à acheter une maison. And then that would be the link to the, to the video. And now for the final phase, which is reinventing payback points. Um, here you'll have accumulated a lot of data from the, the past phase on your consumer spending habits. And we want you to use that data and leverage that to be able to offer them personalized rewards. So we want, we want you to uh, engage your external members of Desjardins and have them uh, reach out for partnerships between, uh, for example, Jansport or different restaurants or things like that. And when people or when your users reach their target objectives and savings, they would receive a discount on these stores or to these stores. So here, this is really uh, increasing customer retention and creating new and interesting incentives. So anyone can set a goal, but we want your users to actually achieve those goals, so we're offering them some kind of incentive so that they do stay on track and that they do reach the goals that they want. Uh, so there'll be a message, for example, congratulations, you've reached your financial goal for this month, and for your reward, you can select uh, an option of different places where you would get a rebate. And this would be uh, recurring every two weeks. So the rewards would last for two weeks, and then uh, they would change after two weeks. Or, okay. <laughs> and we want 80% of users to achieve their goals in the end. So we actually have a case study for you based on this. Uh, it was Fido's Extras. So it's, Fido, as you know, is a millennial uh, center telecommunication company, and basically they did the same thing. They were offering rewards to people who paid through their app, and uh, the rewards would last two weeks, and they would be able to choose which rewards they wanted depending on their interests. So now let's go back to the consumer journey. First thing that your consumer does is wakes up, she's still going to check the news on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram because that's how she is. Now she's gonna go buy a coffee on her way to work, but she's going to receive a push notification that tells her that she's reached her spending limit in terms of food and beverage. Then she's going to actually eat the delicious lunch that she made for herself because she'll know that she have, she'll have reached that limit already during the day. Um, and after work, she's going to watch the Paul Banqui, <laughs> Paul Banqui de ton père YouTube videos on how to manage her budget better. And at the end of the day, she's going to check her Desjardins, uh, her Desjardins app and she's going to see that she's reached today 75% of her savings goal. Yes, impacts and considerations. So as we've gotten told uh, in the case, we said the, the budget is not necessarily an issue. So we know the flow a little bit of how the investments will go. In terms of the first page, uh, YouTube is very cheap. So the only thing you're gonna have to do here is maybe build a team. So we are recommending to hire um, a to two content creators, so two actors, the millennials that'll be on this YouTube series, a videographer and an editor. So that's gonna be your team. You're also gonna give them a budget for um, the content creation. And there's a little bit of capital investment requiring to have the quality of your videos up to just 
industry and professional standards. Now, where the, all of the money goes into is the leveling up. So we know that we have to come up to par and really integrate those fintech features into our big bank. So this is where um, we're going to develop it in-house um, in our risks and mitigation. We're also, if it proves to be um, hard to develop in-house, we have a mitigation for that for maybe acquiring. That's even costlier. So, um, but it is here where there's going to be the bulk of the cost because there's a lot of development involved and a lot of, um, you know, just investment in terms of labor as well. And then there's also the reinventing the payback points. So there's a small capital investment because that's a little uh, feature that we're going to have to uh, in invest in. And then there's an initial investments where you're going to kind of incentivize people to use this new feature and these new payback points. So um, you're going to give out more rewards than usual. So we have a little bit of budget for that too. So the flow is there. Essentially, it's really leveling up where it's going to cost the most. But um, it's a really a good funnel to, it's a necessary thing for our millennials. Jan, I'll take it away with risks and bits. Wonderful. So our first risk based on probability and impact is that there would be some kind of alienation of your current customer segment. Justement les pairs. But that can be uh, <laughs> mitigated, les mères aussi désolé, um, by reinforcing that there are in fact two different segments and there are ways to attract both of these people independently. The second uh, risk would be lack of partners for rewards, but this can be mitigated by increasing spending, uh, creating a you know, sponsorship package, you know, doing that direct selling to these consumers. And it's, it's worked before and it'll keep working and the consumers will love it because that gives them a reason to reach their goals, which makes them in fact save more money. And the third risk is develop, um, developing in-house might have some risks associated that could be mitigated by acquiring a fintech. I'm a millennial and I'm stupid. I'll be entirely honest with you. I'm a presented financials, didn't understand it. <laughs> I'll be entirely honest with you. I'm a millennial and I'm stupid. That being said, that's why I'm so grateful for Desjardins to take this initiative and actually go out of their way to create value for people like me, the stupid ones that don't necessarily understand how you know how to save, but through these videos, through these, um, these, these app upgrades, through these push notifications, it will make me a better person and it will make me you know, get my first house, you know, save up for a college fund, do all these things for my future. And for that, I thank you. Merci beaucoup et on y ouvert les questions. Comme vous voulez, Comme vous <laughs> Absolument, c'est euh, une idée très 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 bonne. En, en effet, ce serait intéressant <rire> <rire> justement d'avoir des, euh, des graphiques genre visuels pour que les, justement les utilisateurs puissent voir les bénéfices en termes de genre pie chart ou genre en bar graph, comment tes savings sont en train d'aller, peut-être genre une ligne, puis genre à la fin une maison, puis genre c'est en train d'aller, ouais. comme des choses faciles à comprendre pour les gens qui ne sont pas nécessairement de, du background genre business, qui ne sont pas nécessairement genre les intérêts en business, mais qui veulent, euh, tu sais, rendre... Euh, <rire> Vous avez mentionné que les jeunes avaient besoin d'éducation financière. Comment vous les ameneriez à justement faire leur budget en premier lieu? Oui, alors c'est définitivement à travers le YouTube channel comme qui va raise, ce qui va amener du awareness pour ce, ces facteurs-là, mais aussi euh, the features comme um, <laughs> um, <I'm sorry. laughs> the features like Milo is they, there is apps that actually millions and millions of millions are already on it. So if it's integrated and you can just push a button, yes, I want to start my bu budget. Like if it's super easy, like we said, like make everything easy. If it's easy, yes, I want to start like making a budget on the app and it's automatically, they kind of categorize it, their spending and it's easy to make it. I think they'll, they'll Okay, so you it would integrate it in the app versus yeah. having to meet someone in person. It's, yes, yes, yes. exactly, yeah. Mais peut-être toujours quelqu'un en support. Of course, yeah, there's always a need for support. Alors moi je pourrais vous demander, est-ce que, est que vous êtes vraiment sûr pour les touches notifications euh, Et c'est vraiment un moyen de... Je sais pas, moi je vois un, un peu comme un moyen de... Je sais pas, je, je, je vais en recevoir une ou deux, je vais me tanner à la fin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't know for, for... I think millennials, like I know since RBC has been... Um, um, sending me a notification of how I can pay back my credit cards with points. 
-hmm. All of a sudden, I started paying back my credit card with points, which I had no idea that I could do. And also, in our, in our idea, we are telling you to vulgarize the financial jargon. So if you vulgarize it in terms of the one less coffee, when they've just taken a coffee, mm -hmm. then that'll be more impactful mm -hmm. and it'll incentivize people to kind of take action if it's more vulgarized than the financial jargon. Yeah, and the frequency with which we're going to receive this situation. Obviously, after a certain point, it becomes like pas nécessairement comme utile. Euh, alors on va dire peut-être euh, si les, les buts sont par semaine ou par deux semaines, mm -hmm. ça serait genre, c'est peut-être une fois chaque semaine, une fois chaque deux semaines, chaque fois qu'il y a un certain genre intérêt à envoyer une notification. Ça, ça peut être comme un but d'alerte. Exemple, toi, tu dis, moi, c'est le budget de café que je veux mm -hmm. suivre. Fait que là, il y a personne qui crée une alerte, puis là, automatiquement, mm -hmm. il y a son maximum, on mm -hmm. lui envoie. Euh, mais sauf que ça, c'est à sa demande, puis c'est moins irritant. Mm -hmm. Il y a peut-être un mix des deux. Mais je pense que c'est aussi la personnalisation qui est la clé, puis d'avoir des, des différents paramètres que les personnes peuvent utiliser justement pour pas qu'il y en ait trop exact. ou pas assez. Okay. Merci. Merci. Merci.